Hello there, Dr. Zakir with you, Senior ENT Consultant and the topic is Complications Related to Sinusitis. Now, let me first tell you the structure of the sinuses. This skull bone, inside the skull bone, we all have four sets of sinuses. So, this one here is a frontal sinus and here you have the maxillary sinus. You can have a look at the picture also. This is a maxillary sinus and here on either side you have the ethmoid sinus and, the, and way behind the nose you have the sphenoid sinus. So, when you have infection of the sinus, that is sinusitis. And if the duration is less than 3 months, it is acute sinusitis. And if the duration is more than 3 months, it is chronic sinusitis. Some of the books, so some of the doctors or scientists, they say acute sinusitis is 1 month. But the latest terminology, it is acute sinusitis means infection less than 3 months. Chronic being infection more than 3 months. So now, I am going to tell you the complications related to sinusitis. So how does this sinus infection spread to the nearby structures. It can be a direct spread because it is very, the other structure, related structures are very near. See, for example, the sinuses and the uh, eye is very near, especially so the ethmoid sinus and is more common in children. Now, if you see this, this the first one is direct spread. Second, it can spread through the veins. There are so many uh, veins which are directly related to the sinuses, especially slow, so between the uh, no, uh, sinus and the eyes. And the third being lymphatic spread and the last is perineural uh, spread. There is, there is space around the nerves. This also can, this also can uh, help. So I have told you about the spread of the sinuses. Now the sinus complications are more common in acute sinusitis. And there are some in, uh, complications which are more common in children and some complications which are more common in adults. But I am not going to divide accordingly. I am going to divide in a different way. I will tell you the common way I will tell you. The sinus infection which is related to sinus uh, uh, which is common in children. This one it is more common in children complication because the bones in children are very thin and they got small pores in that. And not only that, their suture lines are open and the vascular foramen is larger in size. So now coming to the classification of complications of rhinosinusitis, I will broadly classify into extracranial and intracranial. Intracranial means it is brain related complications only. So all the other complication which is not related to the brain is called as extracranial complications. So I will start with extracranial complication, the number one being nasal complication. So now if you see, see this picture in the nose, we all have three structures on either side. These are the turbinates. So whatever the function of the nose be, this is all because of the normal functioning of these turbinates. So what happens in sinusitis, this, these structures does not work properly and this can lead to two complications. One is chronic rhinitis, second one being chronic hypertrophic rhinitis. The third complication being, you can get uh, polyps in the nose which can be either it can come from the sinus or it can be related to the nose alone. The fourth complication being the patient already has sinusitis and they will be and the patient may have give a history of allergy and they will have fungal infection which is termed as allergic fungal sinusitis. The last being in, uh, in sinusitis when it becomes severe that this also is a possibility that it can destroy the normal structure of the structures which is seen in the nose and lead, it leads to a complication called atrophic rhinitis. I will just tell you two or three more complications related to the nose. One is a mucosal. So here what happens is either the mucus, the maxillary sinus opening it gets blocked and you have pent up secretion, mucus secretion in the sinus or you have so many mucus glands in the maxillary sinus. So the mucus gland it gets blocked and the mucus it gets uh, accumulated inside the sinus. So which is termed as mucosal. In this mucosal if you have secondary bacterial infection that is pyosal. Coming to the next complication, sometimes it so happens that the patient may have sinusitis and they have associated facial swelling. 
swelling also which is called as facial cellulitis. Now coming to orbital complication. The ethmoid sinus and the maxillary sinus they are very closely related to the orbit. Especially so from the ethmoid especially more common in children too. Now when the sinus infection starts spreading from the nose to the eye it goes stage by stage. The first two, uh, first two terminology which I have written here it is just before the formation of the abscess which is called as cellulitis. So cellulitis means there is fluid collection and it is that the next stage after cellulitis is abscess collection that is just one step before abscess formation. So first you have cellulitis and two different positions then it starts becoming forming an abscess and finally the whole eye may be filled orbit may be filled up with abscess which is called as orbital abscess. So I told you it goes by step by step stage by stage but it is not necessary that it has to go every patient it has to go like that it can jump from a stage of preceptal it can go into subperial abscess also the last being these are four stages last being cavernous sinus thrombosis not only that the nerve of the eye related to the eye vision can be involved so it's called as neuritis or the nerve which is seen in the back side of the eye of the orbit this is called the orbit where the eye is lodged here uh, you have important 3-4 nerves if that space that place is involved it can lead to orbital fissure syndrome or orbital apex syndrome so I have told you only in a nutshell I put in, put in only one slide actually if you want to know in detail only about orbital complications related to rhinosinusitis you can watch my video where, where I have detailed why you have a spread how it has spread and what are the different stages how and in every stage what are the patient com, uh, complaint and when we examine how it is going to be uh, what will be the finding and investigations detail even the management medical and surgical management if you want to watch that please do watch my video uh, related to orbital complications now let me go to the next one now ear related complication how ear is related to the sinus see for the normal function of the ear ear presence of air in the middle ear is very important where does this air come from see there is a connection between the nose or to be put in a better way between the area behind the nose and the ear that place is called the nasopharynx which connects that connecting tube is called the eustachian tube which connects the nasopharynx to the ear so to, through this tube the air reaches the middle ear if the patient has got sinusitis or rhino, the better terminology rhinosinusitis what happens is the eustachian tube does not work properly in that case it can lead to so many problems it can lead to otitis media with effusion which is common in children what happens is intact behind the intact tympanic membrane there will be fluid collection and maybe they have air fluid level also and the child will, will, uh, will not be able to hear normally they will be irritable and uh, they will sometimes they say block sensation also and that is otitis media diffusion and uh, coming to the next uh, complication that is chronic otitis media where there will be a perforation or hole in the eardrum and the patient complains with recurrent ear discharge or sometimes what happens is the air in the middle ear will be sucked inside whatever air is left behind will be sucked inside and the eardrum will be sucked inside which is termed as atelectasis there are few patients who present with on and off ringing sensation in the ear which is called as tinnitus and very few of them they say they get imbalanced sometimes maybe it is related to the sinus infection too now pharynx related complication means behind the uh, tongue where you have the tonsils normally so from the sinus you have sinus infection uh, spreading to the tonsils leading to recurrent tonsillitis or chronic tonsillitis likewise the place or the area just behind the tonsils is called the pharynx so you have recurrent pharyngitis or chronic pharyngitis or granular pharyngitis suppose the pharynx and the larynx are involved at the same time it is termed as pharyngolaryngitis now coming to complications related to the voice box so this can lead to chronic laryngitis if the patient is suffering from acidity or gastroesophageal reflect disease that may get aggravated and there are few patients who complain just complain only of dry cough always is not productive nothing comes out no uh, sputum uh, is just thin uh, and white in color but he keeps on coughing recurrently now coming to lung related complication 
the one most common being dry cough. And not only that, if the patient happened to a patient of bronchial asthma where they have breathing difficulty on and off, on and off, and they usually if they get about four, three or four episodes of breathing difficulty per year, and if they so it so if it so happens they have uh, sinusitis also, then the breathing difficulty, the episode, it increases from three to four per year to actually almost double like four to eight episodes per year. That means exacerbation of bronchial asthma. Not only that, sometimes some of the patients they present with chronic infection of the bronchus, which is termed as bronchitis, or if the same patient is a smoker, and uh, it can this can lead to bronchitis also. About dry cough, I have already mentioned. Now the bone-related complication, you, we can we may have so the uh, infection of the bone surrounding the maxilla, uh, that is osteomyelitis of the maxilla or it can involve the bone near the frontal sinus which is termed as Potts puffy tumor. Now or um, uh, mouth related complication, see this is a normal dentition which I have shown in this picture. If see if this patient if it so happens he has got he or she has got a maxillary sinus infection on this side and a molar tooth infection and the dentist happens to remove this molar tooth which is very closely related to the maxillary uh, sinus of that particular side. If he removes that, if there is chronic sinusitis, this hole which is results because of the removal of the tooth will not close which is called as oroantral fistula. So if, you, if, if this has to heal, we have to treat the sinusitis. Unless you treat that, it is not going to heal. Now coming to focal infection which means the patient has got sinusitis and he has got a distant uh, sinus related complications like he will have big joint pains like polyarth which is called as polyarthritis or small joints he have on and off he gets pain which is called synovitis or maybe uh, fibrositis too. Now in case their immune, the patient's immune system is not proper. So immune system is a system in the body which keeps us protected from any foreign material. Let it be a bacteria or virus or fungal or any sort of allergy. But if suppose their immune system is not proper and they have sinusitis, there is a possibility that sinus infection can spread from there to the blood supply, uh, to the uh, system systemic circulation and it can spread throughout the body which is called as septicemia. So this is about extracranial complication and let me now tell you about brain complication. Now this brain is covered with a thick covering which is called as the meninges. So if there is abscess formation outside that covering, it is called extradural, is just below behind that or below that is called subdural and if the whole covering is infected it is called meningitis. If the brain uh, acid, the brain is infected it is called encephalitis and if it forms an abscess formation inside the brain it is called as an abscess formation. It is not necessary that it should go by stage by stage. Most of the patients they have just one among them, one among what I have told you. Now to wind up before that let me tell you about cavernous sinus thrombosis. See this brain it has got a venous drainage all the blood was, blood which is been which is drained from the brain when it, before it goes to the heart it is it's drained through a venous system. In that venous system you have we have a structure called cavernous sinus. This cavernous sinus is seen just behind the sphenoid sinus and the, uh, the posterior most part of the sphenoid and the ethmoid sinus and very close to the posterior most part of the orbit or the eye and next to the brain. The why we are giving so much of importance is that in this cavernous sinus you have few important nerves. So if by any uh, chance because of sinusitis if this cavernous sinus gets involved what happens the important nerve function stops. So you have the, those nerve related complications that is about brain related complication. Now I have explained just the terminologies or headings alone related to the, complica the complications related to sinusitis. So if you want to know each one in detail I have entered a few like orbital related complications and all I have entered so you can go through that. Thank you so much.